Welcome to the Vintage Times, a program for senior citizens. On our program today, we will talk about safety and crime prevention. Many older people worry about crimes such as scams, telemarketing fraud, a door-to-door -door salesman, identity theft, uh, uh, cyber uh, scams, and many other scams. Today, we will talk about some of these crimes and about how we can minimize our chance from becoming victims of such crimes. It's important to know that the Sheriff's Office and local police departments have many programs to ensure your safety. I also want to mention that the township has a SALT program, which is a program designed to educate older person about safety and crime prevention. And with me today is Corporal uh, Michael Orso, who is with the DuPage County Sheriff's Office. And thank you for joining us, Mike. Yeah, Anna. Can you please tell us what you do for the Sheriff's Office? Yes, I work for DuPage County Sheriff's Office. I'm a corporal in the Law Enforcement Bureau. Uh, I have many duties. One of my duties are patrolling. I also help uh, with seniors, Good. Um, neighborhood watch. I, I do a number of duties. Mike, can you describe some of the programs the DuPage Sheriff's Office has for older people? Yes, um, the sheriff is very proactive when it comes to uh, seniors and neighborhoods taking care of situations and crime before it occurs. Uh, for example, one of his uh, more popular programs that he has is the lockbox program. This is a lockbox that's designed, it's just like the old realty lockboxes. These are designed um, to hold a key inside of it. It gets attached to the house, um, either on the doorknob or someplace, and you know, if you want to throw it on a water spigot, we, uh, a wrought iron uh, fence right outside the front door and a key goes inside of it to the front door or to a door of the, the person's choice. If somebody lives alone, we often have them fill out an application here. Um, the application is just information. It's the, the person has a, they put their name, the emergency contacts of the people they want contacted, and then um, the, the, person, the, the person that I go to their house, they actually put a key inside Okay. I make sure that the key works with the, you know, with the door, and then we, does, we, put, uh, we put the code, whatever code that they want, whatever code that that person is going to remember. Uh, normally, a senior, when they live alone, these, um, you know, I'll give you a situation. Okay. There was a lady, she suffered from having seizures. Now, normally, um, she could call 911 when she felt these seizures coming on, but by the time the paramedics got there, the police got there, she wasn't able to get to the door. In the past, the police had to force entry to get to her to take care of her because she was having a seizure. So um, one thing that we did, I went over to her house and I put one of these lock boxes on her door. We, I made sure the key worked. Um, it's been successful. We actually, I do know that we have used it. And she lives in incorporated Naperville. It doesn't matter if it's unincorporated, incorporated. It doesn't matter. Um, so we haven't broke her door. We're still able to gain access. And these are very, very secure okay. uh, locks. And the information is confidential. Absolutely. Yeah. This information does not get disseminated out until there's an emergency sent to the residence okay. or even that person's name. Um, there's something called a, pre a premise alert where if that address pops up on, the, on a police dispatch uh, computer, uh, what's going to happen is um, that information will be available to send out to the emergency Wonderful. units. How do we get it? Uh, well, the sheriff's office, you can call uh, our non-emergency okay. number. Okay. And um, they would send it to me, uh, okay. and I would contact the person and mail them an application, and I would explain the situation to them. Okay. We do ask, because there is a cost to this, that they do buy it themselves. Um, you could go to any Home Depot, and I think the, the last time I checked, it was $29 with tax, was less than $35. Money well spent. Wonderful. Um, do you have other programs? Yes, we do. Um, something else we have is something called the Guardian Program. Okay, the Guardian program is set up where uh, if, say, a senior lives at home alone and they really don't get out that often. They're normally at home and 
they, uh, they're pretty much homebound. Well, this is a well-being check by telephone. They would contact our radio room. Our radio room would send the radio room would send them out a application. They fill out the information, and then send it back to our radio room, and then they get assigned a four-digit PIN number. Okay, so say that uh, a, a person lives alone and she doesn't get out of the house that often, and she wants someone to check on her Monday through Friday, nine o'clock every single day. An automated phone number comes from, uh, you know, assigned to her, goes to, goes to her house from our radio room. And um, after she picks up the phone, the person on the other side has to punch in that four-digit code. For some reason, if she doesn't punch in the four-digit code or she does not answer the phone, then we have a live person call, that ho call her house. Oh. And then if, if she doesn't answer the phone still, then we send an officer to her house for a well-being check. And we look through the windows. We want to make sure that person's okay. Right. So this is called the Guardian Program. It checks on your well-being. You tell the sheriff a designated time a day when the phone rings. If you don't pick it up, help is summoned. So that's a wonderful program. Yes, it is. Thank you. Um, any other programs? Yes, I have. Uh, there's something called the um, the lock. I'm sorry the RX program. The R RX program is designed for, this was designed with the health department, the sheriff, and actually the, uh, the county board helped out with this quite a bit too. There's RX boxes at uh, many police departments in the area. Um, in Downers Grove Township, I believe, Burridge Police Department and Lamont Police Department are participants, but also, you know, I would call to Page County Sheriff's Office and find out where these locations are. The reason that the RX box program was designed was many of these medications that we have, we were told years ago to get rid of the medications that we no longer use because our body chemistries are changing all the time. Our, our medications are changing for us constantly. And then they just sit in the medicine cabinets. And um, so oftentimes when I mean, God, you know, there, there is a, some kind of burglary or, or medication gets lost or conf mixed up. Uh, you know, there's, people tend to get rid of them by putting water in the, in, the, in the RX box, shake up, you know, this way it dilutes the, the medication, and then they throw it away. This is a bad thing to do because it goes into our landfills, it goes into our water supply. This is exactly what the health department is trying to um, avoid. avoid happening. So the sheriff, along with the county board, along with their health department, they started this program. And um, you could take your RX uh, medication that you no longer need, and you drop them off in these boxes. Well, they get collected by our department, for example, gets, gets collected by our detective sergeant. And he collects it, he weighs it out, he documents everything that we have, and then the health department comes and picks it up. The health department actually, this program started less than two years ago. And as far as my knowledge, Sheriff's Office alone has incinerated about close to a thousand pounds of wow. medication wow. removed that normally would just be sitting in other people's right. cabinets right. or even thrown in landfills. Yeah. So if you have uh, uh, unused medications you don't need anymore, their collection boxes to get rid of them safely. You'll call the sheriff's office to get more information. You have information about the 911 cell phone, Mike? As a matter of fact, I do, Hannah. The cell link program has <coughs> actually started. Uh, you'll notice, like, I know the Downers Grove Township office, they have a drop area, and so do a lot of police departments and a lot of uh, villages. They have an area where you can drop your cell phone that you no longer need, um, into one of these boxes. These phones actually go to um, people that do not have cell phones. Right. Um, after the phone is, any phone in your drawer that no longer has service, it's by law 911 has to work on these phones. Okay. So we usually take these phones that are collected to, send to, to the sheriff's office. We erase all your personal information, your phone book, your pictures, um, any uh, you know, some of these phones have navigations. We take all that information off, and only the 911 is left on there. Okay. 
Um, here's a situation where it was a very popular, it was, uh, it was a very good um, incident for this person to have this. A lady lived alone, and this was last winter. That really bad winter we had, she's walking to her uh, mailbox to get her mail. She slipped and fell on her driveway. She had her 911 cell phone. She punched in 911, called our dispatch, and uh, an officer came out and helped her out. Otherwise, she would have been laying there. She lived in a, an area that had uh, woods and trees on both sides of her, and I don't think anybody would have seen her for quite some time. So, Mike, this lady actually wore the phone on her body. She had which, it in her pocket. Yeah, yeah, that's what's important, to carry it with you. Absolutely. So, in case of an emergency. Another very good program that you want to call the Sheriff's Office about. Can you tell us now what are some prevalent crimes that happen nowadays to older people? Well, with spring coming, the first thing that pops into my head are, are these uh, springtime scams. Um, springtime, everybody's trying to get their yard in order. They're trying to trim trees. They want to make their driveways look nice and their house look nice, um, painting or whatever. Um, this is a perfect time when they have people who uh, knock on their door and they take advantage of this. Now, seniors are home most of the time. Most seniors are retired and, and they're home. So, so this is why they become victim of these type of crimes more than, you know, more than other people. Um, I'll give you an, an example. Um, a well-dressed man came knocking on a door and he says, ma'am, I, you know, I noticed that you have a tree that's falling down here. I'm a, I, I work for a tree company. I can help you remove that tree. Come on out of your house. Can you sh I'll show you exactly what I can do for you, and I'll do it for $100. I'm out of work. I need the work. Lady says, sure. She, seniors are all, often very trusting. Okay, so the, she went outside. She went to, her tr went, to her, uh, went to her tree. In the meanwhile, somebody came from around the house, went into her house, and um, ladies, you all leave your purses, you know, you know in the kitchen. Yes. Um, most of our personal property is, is left, like, in our top drawer or... Um, they even look in our crispers. You know, they know the stuff is left in our, you know, in our refrigerators, and a lot of valuables are hid there. Um, these scam artists go in there. They're in your house for three, four minutes while that gentleman's, while that nice gentleman is showing you that how to remove the tree, what he's going to do, and do you a big favor and re remove this tree for fifty or a hundred bucks. In the meanwhile, his friend's ripping you off, and and it, it happens too often. What should the lady have done? What the lady, what in this situation, what the lady should have done. Don't even have to open the door. Matter of fact, I recommend that you do not open the door. But talk through the door so that person on the other side of the door knows that, you're, knows that somebody's home. Say, hey, can I help you? And the person's going to say, hey, I'm looking, I I'd like to remove your tree. Say, I'm not interested. Look, if it sounds too good to be true, chances are it's too right, good to be true. true. Right. So. Right. How about some other crimes? People are worried about identity theft. Identity theft. Well, in a situation like this where, you know, like if this lady's purse got taken, that's, that's a whole, all her identities in there. Um, and often seniors are, are the number one, they, they often leave their Social Security card in there or their Medicare card. Um, that's, there's no reason to have your Social Security card or your Medicare card in your purse or wallet unless you're going to the doctor's office and they need a copy of your Medicare card because your social security card, your social security number is on that card. To prevent identity theft, um, don't let the bad guys have, a, have an opportunity to take your social security number. Right. Once they have that, they have your information, and now they'll have your, in this, this situation with the purse being taken out of the house, or you know, if her social security card was in there, I, I can't recall right now, but her driver's license was in there, her cell phone was of in there, course. personal information, her checkbook, all that stuff adds up. Any person could go there and with computers today steal anybody's identity. So don't keep your social security number in your purse. Correct. How else can I prevent identity theft? Uh, I mean, my purse, what do I do with my purse? Well, your purse, um, well, your, number one, don't keep it in your kitchen. Okay. Um, <laughs> don't keep it in your kitchen because oftentimes, um, 
even when, you know, me personally, um, I cut my grass. My neighbors make fun of me. I cut my grass. I shut my garage door because if I'm around back cutting the grass, the garage door is open. It leads right into the house. You know, there's, you know, there's information. They could just walk in my house and just um, right, of course, yeah. take anything they want. How about the phone telemarketing people? Telemarketing. Matter of fact, um, I have some information here in telemarketing. Telemarketers, um, there's, we have handouts, and all this stuff is going to be at the Downers Grove Township office. Um, all this information preventing being a victim of how you can help yourselves. For example, telemarketers, there's, there's, if you, if you don't want to be bothered by a telemarketer, simply say, look, I'm not interested. Please take me off your do not call list and hang up. Okay. If they continue to call, chances are it's a scam. Chances are it's not a real call. It's somebody fishing for your information. Um, people say, well, sometimes they have some of your information. They might say, um, hi, is this Hannah? Hi, Hannah. Um, I, you know, I noticed that uh, you live in whatever town you live in. They'll say, well, Darien, for example. Hi, Hannah, I noticed you live in Darien. They'll say, yeah, how can I help you? So right now, you just confirm that you live in Darien. They try and get little bits, of, little bits and pieces of your information until they have enough to, um, to, get, to get your identity. They'll even confirm, Hannah, you know, I have here, I'm, I'm calling from Chase Bank. I have here your social the, the last four of your social security or the last four you know, of, of your driver's license is one, two, three, four. And you're like, no, 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 it's four, three, two, one. <laughs> well, you just involuntarily told them your personal information. Right. And it happens all the time because seniors are very trusting. So what do I do to prevent this? Don't give any information. You just, um, number one, you hang up, okay? And, and, and you just tell them, I'm not interested. If they persist, if they continue, call the police department. Um, you know, the sheriff's office has always said, look, you can call 911. If you have a non-emergency number, that's probably better. But if you do call 911, you can say, look, I don't know if this is an emergency. However, this is the info. This is I just got this kind of phone call. Or I just had somebody knock on my door and they're trying to solicit Good. something. Because um, you want to know. Absolutely. We had a situation. I'll give you another example. Um, a neighbor, uh, a gentleman, well-dressed gentleman, he had a clipboard. Um, and he said, look, I'm, I'm putting a fence in your neighbor's yard and there's bushes growing in between your properties. Can you show me where your property line is? Because I don't want to have to dig up those bushes. Your neighbor said that they're her bushes. Are they your bushes? Well, this gentleman, he doesn't want to go out. He went outside. He, he said, no, no, these are my bushes. While he's inside, um, somebody else went inside the house and, and they, they, they actually burglarized him. Now, what he should have done okay. is call the police. He should have called the police and said, look, this is what's going on. We, we want to identify these people. Said, look, I'm not interested. I'll, I'll, I'll get, give me a second. Call 911. I have a suspicious person out there. Every police department knows what these scams are about. Everyone. So we're going to go out there. What we want to do, me as a police officer, I want to go out there. I want to identify that right. guy. I want to get him. I want to see his vehicle. I want to run him. I want to run his name. I want to run his vehicle. I want to see his criminal history. And maybe this guy has a warrant. Oftentimes, when these kids um, are selling magazines or they're selling, you know, they're, you know, they're not a real company. And yeah. they're actually trying to see who's home. They're jiggling doorknobs and they're putting stuff on the fly, putting flyers on your doorknobs, checking doorknobs to see if they're open. Um, we've contacted, or we've been contacted by homeowners. We've made contact with these people that are handing out the flyers, and we've had people who had warrants out for their arrest, and we've wow. made some arrests. Wow! So, so that's what we want to do. The important message is: uh, don't let people in your house. Don't follow them into the yard. Call nine one one to double check. Um, Mike, you, as far as safety at home, you have a checklist. Yes. You want to talk about? Um, like I said, Sheriff Zaruba, along with Chief Bulladu of our Law Enforcement Bureau, they're very, very, very proactive when it comes to uh, crime prevention. Uh, one of the things that we put together was a checklist here. Now, this checklist, not everything's going to pertain to every house, but it's a checklist, and some of the things on there are 
you might not be aware of, Hana. Like if I go, like if you fill out this checklist, and one of the questions is, do you have a list of all the serial numbers and watches, cameras, computers, and audio equipment, etc., of all the stuff? If you've ever, be, you know, just in case you ever become a victim of of burglary, uh, there's other things to be safe. For example, um, are your bushes trimmed in front of your door, in front of your windows? Do you have a well-lit area in front of the house, behind the house? Maybe you need motion detectors uh, that turn on lights depending on where you live. Like if you live in a very wood, a lot of our unincorporated areas, there's not a lot of lights around. People like that. It's like a country right. feel. Mm -hmm. However, if someone's walking in my backyard, I want that motion light to turn, to, on. to turn on and see if somebody's back there, catch attention. Right. So what's good to know is that police departments and fire departments do do home security checks, right? Do you do that, the sheriff's office? Absolutely, we do okay. that. Yes, we, we, we'll, we'll come to your house and we'll do home security checks. Yeah, okay, so call you, be sure you call, to call your police department or the sheriff's office and ask. There's so many programs. Um, Mike, you mentioned that uh, seniors are vulnerable. Are they afraid sometimes to report the crime? You know, unfortunately, I'm, I'm finding that just from talking to seniors, I, I spend a lot of time. Um, I spend a lot of time talking to seniors. You know, finding out you know if they are afraid or how come they didn't you know, you know report a certain crime and they you know they say oh I, you know so I, it's my fault. I shouldn't have left my car unlocked last night and somebody lifted the door handle and they they took my GPS unit they took my change you know they they you know it's my fault so I didn't right. you know so I, I didn't report it and I have a neighbor calling you know to report it often they're ashamed often you know they seniors are very trusting I, mean, I said it before seniors are very trusting and 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 they don't want to lose their independence and that's right. another point right seniors um they they're afraid of what their children are going to think. Right. They're, going to, they're afraid of what their neighbors are going to think. Where, right. you know, a, a child, you know, one of their adult children might think, well, maybe mom and dad aren't as sharp as they used to be. Maybe we have to look after them a little more. Seniors are afraid of losing their independence. So we want to assure them there's ways that they can keep their independence. They need to report these crimes. They need to report suspicious, suspicious uh, incidences. They need to do, uh, come, you know, call the sheriff's office, have an officer go out, my unit, I'm in the community resource unit. That's one of the things we do. We actually want to, and, and many other police departments, they have the same type of, of uh, programs right. where they want to, it's right. a lot of crime prevention. Right, good. So now, Mike, if, God forbid, I am a victim of a crime, or oh, I'm suspicious, what shall I do? Call 911 or call your non-emergency uh, police department if you know the number you have to report it. You might have that little piece, that last piece of the puzzle. Let's just say, for example, you left your vehicle unlocked last night and everybody down the street, there's a few cars down there that were left unlocked as well. We might have a fingerprint from one car. We might have um, a shoe impression from another car. We might have, you know, somebody might have surveillance on their house and they might have, you know, an image. You might have that last piece Right. Like that, an extra right. fingerprint. Maybe somebody cut themselves and the DNA is on your car. We want to send an evidence tech out to your car to get as much information as possible. We need the stuff documented because th you might be the last piece of that puzzle to get that person ar arrested. And you know what? If you don't do it, he, that person, that bad right. guy is just going to continue of doing it. Of course. Uh, Mike, we described the SALT Council before. Can you elaborate a little bit on what they do and who they are. Downers Grove Salt Council has has started up again really strong and it's it's doing a great job. Salt stands for seniors and law enforcement together. It's your police departments, emergency agencies such as uh, Downers Grove Fire Department. Um, we have uh, the township, other agencies, and along with seniors, of course, we're trying to educate seniors. We're trying to put this. Uh, get as much education out there so then seniors are not victim of crimes. Right. And one of the very, very successful programs we developed is the File of Life. Do you want to tell, I, I can describe it. 
it is an emergency medical information card that fits magnetically on your refrigerator. It contains vital information such as your medical condition, medications you take, uh, your doctor, uh, names of contacts, and when first responders come to your home, you want to tell us? You sure. Actually, I've, I have had some um, situations where the file of life has been very helpful to me. Uh, me personally responding to calls, an emergency situation where a person, not even necessarily a senior, was on the ground. Um, I, I believe this gentleman was, was in his upper 30s. Um, he, had, he had a pre-existing medical condition and he was on quite a few medications. Well, I looked on, our, on the refrigerator and there was the file of life. All the medications that the gentleman was on, his medical diagnosis, um, all that information was in there and it really helped the paramedics treat the situation of this, of this individual. Yeah, wonderful. Mike, is there anything else of importance you'd like to add? Um, the, one more thing with the RX program, I can't stress enough how much it, how, if there is, if, when there are burglaries, a lot of times these bad guys, they'll take medications, they'll take, you know, they don't know what it is, they don't know if it's heart medication, liver medication, pain pills, they have no clue. They sort through it later on, they just look online and, and they, they actually get this medication and, and whatever they don't need, they throw away. There's even been some situations where uh, grandparents, uh, or I'm sorry, grandchildren and children have gone into their houses and they take medication that belonged to their grandparents and, you know, then they mix right. it with alcohol right. and get right. some kind of cheap right. high. Well, Mike, thank you very much. I know there's so much more we can talk about was very, very helpful information. And I hope that you learned about the many good programs that are available to ensure your safety. I want to also mention that the township just published the banner news, which lists all these programs that Mike talked about. There's also a survey uh, in the back that asks about your perception of safety. So if you didn't get it, please come to the township or to the village hall uh, and get the copy. Um, if you want to call the sheriff's office, call them at 630-407-2400 uh, or you can call us at the township at 630-719-6682. And thank you again for joining us today.